Hey guys, uh, welcome back to the channel. This is part two on the Nissan Xterra. I talked to a customer, approved the repair, so good news. I already uh, did the repairs. This is just, you know, remove components and install components. Um, those are the old parts, so I ended up needed to replace the um, regulator, uh, the also part of the voltage regulator here. Uh, one diode and one of the CMOS only was bad. Uh, that's why we got all these parts in here. Uh, let me just move this, and you can see this one has still got the glue. Hopefully, you can see that one is brand new. And that's, you know, the packaging of that. Let me just move this out of the way so we don't get anything to get shorted in here. Again, this is for Midway Auto Repair in Georgia. Um, all right, so I got everything connected. Uh, and the, again, full probe and full probe diesel. Um, that's the bench uh, power supply that I use for this. And I have it set up to maximum two amps. Uh, I don't want to go higher than that just in case something is shorted. Um, again, uh, software. Sia Electronica Automotriz from Argentina. That's a new full probe simulator I'm using. I am also have the oscilloscope ready to go in here uh, for the test. Uh, the pinouts that we already discussed on the first video. If you guys want to see that, just revisit the first uh, video and that will um, show you what I'm talking about. All right, so the first thing that I want to do is, well, let's set the ignition on. So power on, ignition on. We have an active uh, CAN network, and I like that to see that, that it's actually on all the time. So we're going to use the oscilloscope for that. I'm just using channel one in my oscilloscope. Remember that when I was here in these two pins, which is a CAN network, we were seeing really weird things. Now we have a healthy communication. So let me just change this. Um, the speed of that. Uh, let me stop and see if I still have that capture to see what speed we need to set that up. Um, this is Picoscope 7. Um, let me just measure this to see. So we got a two and a half in here. Well, it's going from one and a half to two and a half, so that's kind of low. All right, so let's go down to uh, maybe 50 microseconds. And let's run this again. And let me take this zoom off completely here, because otherwise we will never be able to see anything. All right, so I'm going to go over to the same pin in here. And we got a signal in there. And that is our CAN network, perfect. So that's the one side. I'm going to go over to the other side right now. And that is beautiful. So, yep, that com that is a healthy communication. And that is giving me hopes up that we are indeed having a now good communica uh, communicating computer. Uh, what else do I want to see? I can show you if you guys want to. Voltages, as we did before. Um, I'm going to just get you there like that. Mm -hmm. So again, we should have five volts in here. And we do have the five volts. This is usually five volts. It's a little higher, 6.97. But again, it's, uh, that's what this computer is using. Um, this one should be 12 volts. And we have this one before. And the 3.3 .3 right here, those are the main voltages you want to see on this computer. I think this one is also 12 volts in here, and this is five volts. So this is the test that you do around here, and obviously the communication. Uh, we already saw the crystal, the values in there before, and this is all I do for testing on a non-communication computer. All right, so we're going to do over to um, the auto scan, the moment of truth. All right, let's see. All 
Okay, that's a good sound. I like that sound. That means they're reading the bin down the bin number, and that's the bin number on the car. All right, we're gonna do a quick access since we only have the computer connected. Otherwise, you can do a scan, which works as well too. In the vehicle, you can do just a scan. That's what I usually do, and then you don't have to do the quick quick access. Okay, so we're going to do a manual selection. Let me see maintenance programming car full system diagnosis automatically search let me do an automatically search okay perfect confirm all right so that's the next era perfect and then we can just go over to the ecm we're going to enter the ecm and i'm going to select the pits remember we got uh, air temperature sensor tps1 and the coolant temperature sensor uh, tps uh, since i think this software doesn't have uh, actually way to change the TPS is more like accelerator pedal position and then the reaction of the TPS in the throttle body. So in here, we just will probably see yes, the five volts on that sensor. All right, so we're going to go over to read data stream, uh, main signals, and then we can just type in here, uh, sorry, coolant temperature. All right, coolant temperature, that is one, uh, TPS, we have the band one uh, and then uh, air temperature or in this case intake temperature sensor okay uh, let me just go back and then click okay here all right so we got the three sensors that we now need to see respond um, on the computers as i do so let's go over first the coolant temperature sensor so I'm going to be moving these ones up and down. So we got 158 degrees and it went down to 24. Perfect. So that is, I'm going to go to the maximum, 230 degrees. Perfect. 50%, 120. So that is working as it should. Let me find the uh, air intake temperature sensor. Right here. All right. So we got 75 degrees. I'm going to go to maximum. 210 degrees to minimum 30 degrees and then 50 percent around 120 so yeah perfect so the computer is reacting we have now a fully working computer all right guys this is a full uh, successful repair on a 2008 nissan xterra if you have any computer with a problem like that you know where to send it as usual we are always trying to do our best for our customers and for all our subscribers in YouTube. Um, thank you so much for visiting. Hopefully you like this, the content. I'm also trying to share some of the techniques that I use in here in order to make this work. I am really, really happy with this new setup that I have. It's really actually really fast to connect. As you can see on this computer, I have to actually use a lot more wires uh, wires to make everything work, but uh, all the connectors work. So I will, like I said, we'll be requesting them to build some of those harnesses for me and then, then going to keep that for the records like that. If any USA customer wants to order an equipment like mine, they can just offer that ready to go. And they will most likely have all these um, computers that I'm working on. They will have all the cam and crank correlations and everything in uh, pads or uh, whatever system it uses as a mobilizer that you can uh, use uh, like with this one, you have a key reader in here in the front. This is a full immobilizer uh, setup box in here. And you can do programming and everything with this. But if for any reason uh, you need to provide uh, the antenna for the car, because some vehicles, uh, this will not work because this has some frequencies that can go up to and some are not. So let's say if that needs to be done, then you have a connection on the house, on the side. Let me show you that. <clears throat> so I got if I go here, uh, pin out for uh, right, right here. So this is the pin out for the emo. So this will be for the immobilizer, and then you see that you have the extra three, four antenna. Uh, that you have to, uh, or that you can connect a wire in, and then you can connect the, the original antenna from the vehicle, and then put just the key there, and then the computer will recognize, and you can 
uh, simulate the engine running, the computer will allow you to, to start and check in injectors and coils without needing to do any more off or some other process that we do and try to not do because it's always a risk when you do any more off. You have to flash and reflash the um, memories on the microprocessor and that can be risky. So if you don't have to do that and you can just connect the antenna and use the key original key from the vehicle, then that's perfect, right? Because antennas are not uh, specific, let's say are specific for the model of the vehicle that you're working on, but not specifically to the vehicle. The only that is specific to the vehicle would be the programming and the key chip. So as long as you got an antenna that reads that frequency, you can, you know, buy an antenna if you do like this kind of work like I do here. Let me just show you one second. Uh, this is an antenna from Lincoln and Ford. It works really good. Like I said, you can have just uh, one of these antennas for a vehicle that this uh, setup will not cover and then just connect it on the side and then again do what I just said that you can do, which is run the computer. All right, guys, but this is a successful repair. Everything is working. I am very happy. I am. I really like doing this. It's a uh, it's time consuming for sure, but it's, you know, you're at home, you're not as stressing your body as much as you will do in as me as a mechanic or so. So it's fun. And I like playing with all these new tools and new toys. Uh, <laughs> all right, guys, uh, too much talking. Hopefully you like the content. I will see you next time. Thank you so much. And don't forget to subscribe. Bye bye.